Hi, this is Tim Stein and welcome to the third video in our video series of the basics of piano playing. And in this video I want to talk about finger numbers and the importance of good fingering. Well, basic fingering, I mean you open a piece of music and you see a three written above a note in the right hand and a four written below a note in the left hand and you think, what does that mean? Well, it's actually very straightforward. If you put your hands out in front of you, your hands are backwards to one another. So if you just think first fingers, second fingers, third fingers, fourth fingers and fifth fingers. And I have a very useful drill to drum that in because your brain has to send the right signals to your hands. So if you actually play a note and call out a finger number, it's a useful exercise. So for example, in my right hand, I say right hand, third finger, and try and maintain a good hand shape, which is what I talked about in the previous video. Nice curved position. Third finger, right hand, play any note. Fourth finger, left hand, play any note. Fifth finger, right hand, play any note. Fifth finger, left hand, play any note. And after a while, you should be able to tell each finger what to do and, and know what those fingers are referring to. And a good little exercise is if you take a simple five note exercise beginning on middle C with both hands and just call out again the finger numbers. So starting on C together, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, fours, threes, twos, ones. And after a while, you won't need to call out the finger numbers. You see a number, you see a note, and then automatically you'll play the right note with the right finger. You can do the same exercise crossing over the hands, and here there's a little more coordination involved, so do it very slowly. So if I position my right hand on middle C, my fifth finger is on middle C, and my left hand is crossed over an octave below. And again, you can call out the finger numbers. Now this is a little harder, because my left hand is playing different fingers, and my right hand similarly. So for example, you're going to have to call out five and one, two and four, so for example, five and one, two and four, threes together, fours together, fives together, fours together, threes together, twos together, ones together. And you can cross over your hands the other way and do exactly the same thing. Don't always rely upon a fingering in a piece, but if you're starting out, it's probably the most sensible thing to do. But if you're more experienced or if you've got a teacher to help you, let them suggest something that works for you. But always experiment with the fingering. Don't always assume that it's the correct one that's written in. A basic tip for working out fingering also is to do what I call musical mapping. So if I demonstrate by playing a, a short extract, little piece by Clementi, I'll show you exactly what I mean by musical mapping. Now, in my left hand, I've got three notes in a basic five-finger position. Now, what I would do is, instead of playing those three notes individually, I'd play them all together as a chord, three notes together. And I would practice the left hand in exactly that way. Next chord. Next chord. And I learn my fingering that way. And I would also pencil my fingering in if it isn't marked in. Now. Some people do very strange things with their fingering. And for example, if you take a basic three note chord, so again, for example, thumb on C, third finger on E, fifth finger on G, that's perfectly natural. And I often see people putting their second fingers on E's or their fourth finger, that doesn't feel comfortable. So try to find something that works, that allows you the ease of playing. I hope this helps, and the most important thing, is, as I've said, is where necessary to write in as much of the fingering in a piece as possible, so that you know exactly what it is that you're using. It's also easy to change a fingering when you're practicing something. So in order to achieve security, try to use the same fingering over and over again. I hope you enjoyed that video, and that you look forward to the next one when I talk about geography of the keyboard, and hope you can tune in then.